I love barrel aged barley wines. So today I'm gonna brew my very own super high gravity barley wine and age it for a long time in a freshly emptied bourbon barrel from the US. The style of barley wine that I really like is the new style kind of barley wine that is a little bit on the sweeter side, higher ABV and a lot, a lot of barrel time. And it's super complex with flavors like raisins, caramel, leather, almost like a port wine kind of like style. Hi, my name is Espen and welcome to my channel. This is my very first brew video, so hopefully it turns out good. So yeah, without any further ado, let's get brewing. Since this beer is going to be aged in a 15 gallon bourbon barrel, I'm doing a 90 liter batch to make sure that I have enough beer to fill the barrel completely and have leftovers for blending projects. I'm brewing with the Brew Tools B150, so it's a big brewing machine, and the main reason why I upgraded to this was to easily brew beers like this. For the water, I adjusted it to 50 ppm calcium chloride and 155 ppm calcium sulfate. The inspiration for the higher sulfate ratio is because of the old school English barley wines. I also adjusted a mash pH to 5.5. If you don't have a pH meter and know your water profile, you can easily calculate this pretty close with programs like Brewfather. The grain bill is really simple with only Chevalier malt, but I also used my Risotto malt extract and Demerara sugar to bump up the original gravity. Mash the grains at 64 degrees Celsius and take your time to stir it well. You gotta make sure that it isn't any doubles left in the mash while stirring. Do a 90 minute mash and give it a stir every 20 minutes. After the 90 minutes I raise the temperature to 78 degrees Celsius and set the timer to 15 minutes to do a mash out. Ok, it's time to lift the mold pipe and start sparching. When you're using this much mold you definitely need some tools to help you out. For this brew I sparge with 25 liters of water. While you're warming up the wort, add the sugar and give it a good stir to make sure that everything is dissolved. Do the same thing with the malt extract and yeah, it's a sticky mess. And depending on how much you're using, it's gonna take a long time. For this brew, it took a long time. And don't forget to stir a lot here as well. The main reason why I added pre-boil is to be able to caramelize everything during the long boil. All that is left now is to warm it up and boil the hell out of it. Since I'm doing a 7 hour boil, I got a lot of time to relax and grab some beers. So, see you soon! Since I'm aging this beer in a bourbon barrel, it's definitely time to get one. So far I bought all my barrels from Midwest Barrel Company. They get new barrels from different distilleries all the time and they're freshly emptied. I really recommend you guys to check them out if you're planning to barrel age. Alrighty then, let's see how the boil is... shit. After turning the floor into velcro, we're back in business and everything is looking good so far. I used 80 grams of Admiral hops to give it an IB of 30 and added it when it was 100 minutes left of the boil. Look at that thick and syrupy wort. When it was 15 minutes left of the boil, I added the Verflock and of course, yeast nutrients. Seven hour boil later, it was finally time to cool down the wort. While the wort was cooling down, I prepared 13 packs of rehydrated Nottingham yeast. 
I'm lazy, so I just use store-bought water and blended the yeast with that. Since this beer has such a high original gravity, I blended it 50-50 with water to do a reading. And the original gravity? 1194. When you're brewing a big barrel like this, it's really important to add a lot of oxygen. And I aerated the wort for about 3 minutes. When you're done cooling it down, transfer it to a fermenter. An important thing to remember here is that you need a lot of headspace. If you're filling a fermenter all the way to the top, get ready to clean the next couple of days. Oh, and use a blow-off tube instead of a regular airlock. The only thing left now is to add the yeast and let it do its magic. If you like what you've seen so far, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Start the fermentation at 18 degrees Celsius. You can see the rest of the steps in the full recipe that I linked in the description. 24 hours later. Like you can see, the Nottingham yeast is a brutal beast and it's perfect for big beers like this. And I never had any problems creating beers between 15 and 16%. 24 days later and this beast had fermented down to 1074, making it 15.6%. But after I filmed this video, it dropped another two points and so now it's at 16%. Hell yeah! I got my barrel and it's time to prepare it to be filled. You want to fill it as soon as possible, but I always rinse the outside of the barrel with hot water daily to keep the barrel tightened up until it's ready to be filled. I also do the method called head swelling. Just set the barrel vertically and fill the head with hot water and let it sit overnight. This is a great way to see if there is any leaks. If you see bubbling, keep adding hot or boiling water until it's tightened up. When you're ready to fill, spray the bunghole with star sand and purge the barrel with CO2. Fill the barrel with uncarbonated beer. Don't get scared of the chunks floating around in your beer. That's just burned wood chips from the inside of the barrel and everything will drop to the bottom during the aging process. Fill the barrel all the way to the top and put in a barrel plug. If you're using a wooden one, you could use a hammer to get it as tight as possible. The only thing left now is to let time do its thing, so expect a follow-up video then. Until next time, Go!